Okay, let's make some liquid watercolor analogous leaves inspired by Georgia O'Keeffe. So when I say analogous colors, what does that mean? Let's look at our color wheel. So we have our triangle of primary colors. And then I flip that triangle upside down. I have this triangle of secondary colors. So primary first, whenever we mix our primary colors together, we get our secondary colors. Then in between those, when we mix a primary and a secondary, we have tertiary. So tertiary starts with T and so does three. So we've got primary, secondary, tertiary. Now analogous colors are colors that are next to each other on the color wheel. So yellow, orange, and when we mix those together, yellow, orange, yellow, orange, yellow, orange. These colors are analogous. So that means they are close to each other on the color wheel. We could also do red, violet, and red, violet. We could do blue, violet, and blue, violet, and continue green, blue, blue, green, yellow, green, yellow, green, yellow. Okay. So when we look at our color wheel, we look for colors that are next to each other to create our analogous color scheme. So if we look at my Georgia O'Keeffe inspired leaves here, I've got blue and uh, some green. So I've got blue and blue green, and I've got yellow and green, which green, yellow, yellow, green. Then for my background, I wanted to use a color that was contrasting. So I looked across the color wheel and you might know that blue and orange are across um, the color wheel from each other and that makes them complementary. So um, whenever you are choosing your background color, try to find a color that um, is contrasting because you want your leaves to stand out on your painting. So let's get started making our analogous color um, leaf painting. So I think, well, you know what? I don't have to choose yet. I'm gonna go ahead and get started drawing my leaves first and then I'm gonna choose my colors. So first I'm going to write my name on the back, nice and big, mystery, that's me and flip over my paper. Now I'm writing my name with a pencil, even though to draw my leaves, I'm going to use a oil pastel. And do oil and water mix? No, they do not. So our oil pastel is going to resist our liquid watercolor and it's going to turn out looking very cool. So when we looked at our Georgia O'Keeffe paintings, we noticed that they were very large scale. They took up a lot of the canvas. So we're going to try to do that with our leaves too. I'm gonna draw some oak leaves like Georgia O'Keeffe did, but I have some leaves that I collected from the school farm and they are in a little bin. So you can look at those, be careful with them because they are uh, prone to break. But you can look at them for some inspiration because we will be drawing these shapes and we need to draw the little veins inside of our leaf as well. The reason I like oak leaves so much is because they are so organic. They are so loosey goosey, wibbly wobbly and there is no rhyme or reason. They just go in and out and in and out, and um, they're a lot of fun to draw. So I'm gonna draw a really big oak leaf right here. And the way I'm gonna do that is start with the center vein of my leaf. So I'm not gonna start with my shape, I'm gonna start with my center vein. And I'm gonna do that right here. And then I'm going to draw my shape. So like I said, loosey goosey, I'm just gonna do some organic shapes here. Here we go. And if it goes off the page, that is even better, okay? Because we are inspired by Georgia O'Keeffe with her large scale leaf paintings. Then I'm going to do one more that is behind in the background of this leaf. And I might do it, uh, I'll do the center line right here. And then I'll go like this.
And there is my second leaf. And I'm going to add the veins. Now the veins are going to be straight lines that come out of that center vein and kind of follow these shapes that we've made. So I'll do one up here. And it's kind of like branches of a tree. They just go off of that. They keep growing off of the center line. So I've got my center line and then I'm going to go out towards the outside here and they can just keep adding. Then once I've drawn all of my veins, I'm going to choose my analogous color scheme. So for my first leaf, because I'm gonna do my two leaves in two different analogous color schemes. For my first leaf, I think I'll show you what you can do if you wanna use some pink, because I did give you all the colors on the color wheel and I also gave you magenta. And if we're thinking about magenta, what is the kind of base color from the color wheel for magenta or pink? It's red. So I'm going to look at red on the color wheel to help me out to figure out what colors I want to use with my magenta. So I've got one leaf, two leaf, and my background. I'm going to look at my color wheel. So magenta starts with red. So I'm going to look at my red here, and I'm going to do red and violet and red violet. And I'm going to show you how I'm going to do that. So I've got my liquid watercolors. Your liquid watercolors are on a tray. There is no reason to take your liquid watercolors off the tray. If you spill on the tray, no big deal. That's why we've got a tray. But there's no reason that you should spill anywhere other than on your tray because that's kind of the point. So I've got all my colors of the rainbow and I'm using right now red, violet, and some pink because I want to show you how to use that pink because it's really pretty. I didn't have to give you the pink, but um, I just thought it was nice and I, and I like the way it looks. So I'm going to dip my brush in the water because even though my liquid watercolors are already um, in liquid form, we still want to just make sure that our brush is nice and wet and we want to um, maybe wash off any paint that is left on this brush because you never know who used it before you. So I've got some water on my brush and I'm going to mix together my red and my violet. So the way I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna get some red and I'm gonna do my mixed color for the center vein here. So I'm gonna use circular motions. See, I'm using circular motions and I'm staying kind of in one spot because I want to work small while I'm mixing because it will um, dry pretty quickly. And when I'm mixing these colors, I'm making sure that I'm washing my brush in between each dip into my color because I don't want to mix them together in the um, little container. I just want to mix them on my paper. But you can see if I work small and I work quickly, I can create that mixed color um, really beautifully on my leaf. And if I just add water, because that's what I'm doing here is I'm just dipping into the water and kind of spreading out my color it really moves around nicely. So once I have my mixed color in the middle, I can add a solid color on the outside. So I think I'm gonna add some red because I wanna show you what happens with the pink. Analogous colors are gonna look awesome when they're mixed together and when they're next to each other because that's how they are on the color wheel. They're right next to each other. And so they're never gonna make kind of like a muddy gross color. They're always gonna look really beautiful. And I can kind of just touch some of this red um, on this paint that is still wet and it's going to move around in kind of an organic and natural way. Now while this paint is still wet, that's where I'm going to add my pink. So I'm going to come in and just touch some pink into this red to add a little bit of interest and I can move that around, connect it with my center mixed color here add some pink up here in the corner. Ooh, look at the little bead. It didn't even spread around. There it goes. So I can get some pure magenta up here. It's really pretty. Mixing it together. So you can see how all these colors, because they're next to each other on the color wheel, look really beautiful together. For the background, we're doing a technique called wet on wet. So I'm going to dip my brush in the water and I'm just going to put water, oops, look, and that moved around and that's okay. 
I'm just going to put water on the background. If your water's a little um, dirty with paint, that's okay. If you get a little color on here, that's okay. My little overhead lights just turned off, but that's also okay. You can still see it. So I've painted my background right here with just water. And then I'm going to get some paint and I'm going to put it on top of the wet background. So I'm going to use green because that's across the color wheel. It's a complementary color to my red, and I think it'll contrast really nicely. So see, if I just touch this color on that wet paper, it's going to move around on its own. But I'm going to go ahead and help it out too. And that wet on wet technique just adds a really cool effect to the background. That's okay that we mix together a little bit. And it's just a nice watercolor technique to know about. So we're going to do wet on wet for the background. You're going to do one color with one analogous color scheme. I mean, one leaf with one analogous color scheme. The other leaf with another analogous color scheme. And then choose a contrasting color looking across the color wheel for your wet on wet background. Then you will be finished with your Georgia O'Keeffe analogous color leaves. Um, and these turn out so, so pretty. I love to see all the analogous colors working together and um, that contrasting background. So let's get started. Can't wait to see them.